This is the Pete and Sebastian Show with Pete Corielli and Sebastian Maniscalco. Pete and Sebastian Show, we're back. I'm Pete Corielli, of course. Sebastian Maniscalco hanging. Uh... I don't know, 450-something show here, bro. How you doing? How you feeling? Well, you know, we uh, we wrapped shooting on Friday, and um, eh, let's just start right off the bat. Oh, yeah. I've never done a movie, a TV show from beginning to end. And on top of that, I never did anything that was, quote, unquote, my show. I've done a pilot, but I've never done like a good seven, eight week run of anything. Right. Where I where I was the the guy. So last day, I'm like, do I need to make a speech? Okay, so for anyone not knowing, this is the wrap of the food show. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. Th- now this is interesting because when I wrote on Kevin's show, it was the first time I wrote on anything where the last show, like everybody's clapping and stuff, and I'm like, oh, it's like a big deal if you're here from start to be to end. So, like you're saying, you've always been a guest spot or, or, or have a part on a movie, but maybe not there the last day of the shoot. So this is your big thing, and now at the end, did you, uh, did you, did so, you? I'm dying to know how this played out, man. <laughs> so everybody is getting together, right? And I go. Uh, Hey guys, uh, just want I want to say something. You ever you ever go? Okay, I'm gonna do a speech, and then in the speech, you're like, "How the hell did I get over here?" <sighs> I, I I went down a I, I went down and I, I went down an aisle that I didn't expect to go down. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, a little personal, teared up, or what? I'm dying to know. So. I'm going, thank you so much for this experience. You know, uh, I was really nervous coming into this thing. I've never been the person to make friends uh, in my life. You know, I've always been very uh, timid around people I don't know. And uh, even when I was in lunch, uh, I remember my first day of high school, I didn't know anybody at my lunch. And uh, I had to sit at a lunch table alone. And you guys made me feel like I had a seat at your lunch table. And I'm like, and, 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 and now I'm starting to, I'm starting to fucking tear up, man. Uh, bro, how could, I mean, if you sat for two hours with a pad and pen, you couldn't have come up with this shit. And you're riffing it, right? I mean, this is beautiful. This is beautiful. But I'm crying. And I'm like... This, this was six weeks. This not Cheers, where we did a 10-season run. <laughs> hey, listen, though. You know, it was during a pandemic. We all came together. It was a heavy load. That was another one. I did the pandemic. I go, you know. And again, I was like, you know, some days, some days I got the set, and I was tired, you know. Regardless of how you feel about it, you know. Some days it was 16 hour days. Sometimes it was early calls. But every time when I put my head on that pillow at night, I was just grateful to be working. (laughs) 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 I I, I swear to God, I glanced at some of the people. And and, 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 and you ever do a glance off and look at some of the people to get reaction? I think some people are going, what the fuck? What's he crying for? Like, I swear to God, I heard that. <laughs> some of them are probably like, it was six weeks. I didn't even quit my day job. It's just a part time. <laughs> I'm a moonlighting. You know? And half of them are like, guy, can you wrap this up? Because we need to go find new jobs after this fucking speech, all right? Jesus, what are you, Tom Cruise wrapping up uh, the fifth Mission Impossible guy? <laughs> <laughs> you would have thought. I know. You, you thought I was Ray Romano. Oh. Wrap, it, wrap, wrap it up, Ray. So uh, it was uh, it was a good run. I was exhausted at the end of the week last week. Came home, had a couple glasses of wine, which, you know, I've been off the, off the sauce, but... Uh, I had some wine with Lana, and uh, here we are, Monday, 
Monday morning or Monday morning. This is, this is Monday night for you. This is generally speaking, we don't go this late in yeah. the day, right? Yeah. No, yeah. And I was wondering when we schedule this, do you think it matters when we do this? Uh, in ba- it, 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 if we do it in the morning, is it better than we do it at night? Or do you think it matters? Uh, <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know. I think I think sometimes maybe you prefer morning more. Uh, I don't know. It's just a guess. Um, but either way, no, nah, I can't say. The only thing I can say is if it's like if, if, if I'm uh, away from the family, then it might be a different show because then I might have beer and then a lot of edits for DJ Hank and the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I can't what? say. <laughs> Although I do like this hour. This is nice for me, man. I feel like you really settle into this hour. This is like in your pocket, nightfall, in the basement. <laughs> Maybe yeah. it's still sunny out, but the sun's coming down. This is like it right, is. right, right where you were. Yeah, and you know what's great about it? I missed that bullshit uh, hour of putting the kid to bed with the bathing and the helping out. So when I roll <laughs> out of here, the best part about this hour is Jackie's already on the couch. So I love to roll out and give it a highlights. Jack, you know what Sebastian said? It was hilarious, you know? Boom, 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 yeah. <laughs> and then I tell her, I said, da, 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 you think I can leave that? What do you think, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you ever ask Lana about the edits? You ever run the edits by her? Uh, no, because I, you know, I kind of know uh, at this point what's going to What's going to flag something, what's not. But as long as we're talking about this subject, let's talk about <clears throat> the, the some of the messages you were getting uh, oh. last week in, reg- in regards to this church bit you did. And I, stre- and I stress bit, right? right? Yeah. Um, again, what you, were, you just grazed over it on the pre-conversation before we started recording. Yeah. You got a message from a priest? Yeah, well, first I got one from a woman that I didn't even read the whole thing, God bless the lady, but started out with, I had to switch the channel, which, that's, oh that's but that's what you do, that's great, you're not liking it, switch the channel, but by the way, by the way, I drop F-bombs, I use the f- fuck like a comma, bro, and, <laughs> and she don't got a problem with that, but all of a sudden, right, so, you know, and by the way, I thank you when I did the bit, it was the bit about the... Uh, not even a bit, like you said, just saying, you know, why am I taking the big guy right now? And then you go, uh, yeah, wouldn't it be nice if the priest took his robe off and gave him down from this? It was funny, right? So I, I go, all right. And then a couple other people are coming at me with the church aspect of it. And then today I get a tweet from a, from a, a priest telling me, <laughs> and, he, and he starts to tweet with hilarious show as always. So, I mean, bro, there were priests sitting in the rectory. <laughs> listening to this cast with a little blood of Christ. Can you imagine that? <laughs> I mean, that's the beauty of this show. Kids in the backseat of cars are listening, laughing, and priests. Well, I should compare those at the same time, but my point is <laughs> there's a wide range of people listening to this. So he t- he hits me with a, I should look at the, sometimes this, what do you call them, a psalm? A psalm when they give you, you know when they go like 14-72, brother, it'll help you. It'll, you know, so it'll... Show you the light, you know? Uh, yeah, what, like, like a passage? Is that, well, what do you call it when they give you the numbers? I don't know. I, I, I call it a passage. A, a psalm to me is the guy that brings out the wine at the restaurant. Oh. <laughs> oh, a psalm. <laughs> Leo, something you call it. Where's the psalm? <laughs> <laughs> So, so, so he's doing gotta, the Sam Jackson. I gotta, I'm sorry, I gotta make sure this fucking thing is. Uh, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Of course, gold. bro. When you got Go gold, ahead. you know what I'm saying. <laughs> so, uh, he's doing the Sam Jackson in Pulp Fiction, you know, and you know, uh, as Luke said in 14 two, you know. So this was yeah, yeah, yeah. 13. I, it's on my phone. I'm using it to record, but it was 13 dot dot, and I believe five. Or maybe two, um, and and it was uh, he said, look into this. It helps me at times, you know. And and in the past, when someone before the internet, you give me that something, I'll ne- I'll never know. 
because I ain't going to go find the Bible, flip through. I don't even know how to flip through to the number, right? You don't know. It doesn't go in any order, right? <laughs> okay, say 2,000 pages. I'm going to flip through looking for 13 dot dot five. <laughs> so anyway, but I go to Google 13 dot dot five, and it comes up and it says, um, you don't, don't ever worry about money. Uh, because the God was always with you and that's all you need. Yeah, right. Because when I go to check into the Four Seasons, they don't ask me for my credit card. They ask me if I have God in my pocket, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> I just ripped that. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> But you didn't even need, you don't even need, you don't even need the help. You know what I'm saying? Like, this guy's offering you, hey, what helps me out. Yeah. We were just saying in a casual conversation, yeah. you know, when, in, in, the, uh, in the religion it said, Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Now, the come again, we're waiting, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So... So I would have thought during the pandemic where half a million people died in the United States, he would have came down and said, hey, guys, don't worry about it. You're going to be yeah. fine. Oh, oh, man. Listen, if he was waiting for the good timing, now would just you. Like, if I knew God and I was up there with him, I'd be like, bro, if you came down now, you would crush. I mean, that, the crowd is bubbling. <laughs> I mean, what is he, Axl Rose in the high, during Guns N' Roses in the height of it? He would come out three hours after the ticket time start. What the fuck? <laughs> That's insane, bro. <laughs> and, pe and he was such a big star, people didn't even mind, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wow. I'm telling you, it's that's basically what we were trying to say in the last yeah. cast. And again, wrapped in the foil of comedy, and people like it all. Like, hey, you read this; it will help you out. This and that. We're doing it for fun, people. <laughs> for fun. <laughs> it's fun. This thing. Uh, we ain't looking for a passage. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, no. And I don't think I complained about money anyway with that so-called bit. I was just yeah. saying I think God's been napping, that's all. Anyway, <laughs> listen, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to become pen pals with the father. I, but I do appreciate it, father. That was, uh, it was cool of him. And I'm, I'm more than anything, I'm just psyched that we got the clergy listening. I mean, who's not listening to this thing? I mean, am I, is it safe to say that this podcast possibly penetrated the walls of the Vatican? I'd be happy if Frank from Toledo, Ohio, who works as a machinist Monday through Friday and can't wait for the show to come out and laugh a little bit after a long, hard day's work. That's where I'm right now with the fans. That's, hey, listen, that's a beautiful thing you say. Personally, I'd love to know that Putin is watching it with subtitles, but I'm glad you're rooting for Frank from Toledo. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Putin with a cigar and his feet up. I like the two Italians from America. You listen, they do subtitles for me. No, I know. I'm right there with you, dude. That's who we want to be listening. I used to grow up, I would, did, uh, did plumbing work with my uncle, uh, and we would literally work... Like, you know, doing sewer and drain stuff, truck doors always open with stern cranking in the morning. He'd have Kinnison on, uh, you know, we'd have Robin, all, all the comics come on all the time. And it was like gold, man. And you're just sitting there for four hours going, I can't believe this shit is free. This is insane. It's, it's, it's amazing. Not that, not that I say that about Oz, I'm just saying. Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to say about ours. All right. Let me, let me see if you agree. <sighs> Do you think we should start commissioning this with the Board of Education to give this podcast as a roadmap to immigrants coming into this country of what America is all about? Like, you think somebody could listen to this podcast, all 460 some odd episodes, and go, all right. This is what to expect in America, right? Well, if you're saying, as, a, as an immigrant coming to this country, if you yeah. want to 
slide right in. Like, as far as just, just like, you know, you know, if I move to Italy, I don't want him to be like, you know, look at this fish out of water. He doesn't know the streets. He doesn't know that we don't eat the thing with the thing. Yeah, if you yeah. want to slide right into all ways, then this is the show, all right? I mean, we cover everything from tipping to clothing to exercise, no? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. I would think if a person listened to our uh, whole library, came to the United States... Yeah. People in America would go, wow, you seem really accustomed to what's going on here. Where did you learn that? And they would respond with episode 16 <laughs> on the Pete and Sebastian show. Oh, man. Well, uh, let me listen. Listen, to, 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 to cap to your point, uh, there's a guy. I get a note in my on my porch in my mailbox recently, right? Typed the letter with a little little gift of uh, you know my hobby in a box, and it was mm. it wasn't mailed. It was put in my mailbox. I'm like, what the Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, guy, yeah, yeah, yeah. listen, wow, what? Hey, you know, uh, you know. So as soon as I hear that, I, I my brain goes to three o'clock in the morning. Uh, right? Yeah. Some some person <laughs> comes up. Parks a little past the house, shuts the car off, gets out, dark hood, dark hoodie, puts it in the mailbox, and leaves. That's where my head at. That's where my head's at. <laughs> well, yeah, no, there was a little part of me like, you know, wow, I guess more than just the mailman can get on my porch without me noticing during the day, huh? You know? But it was a note from a college kid uh, who goes to college here. And he's, yeah. he now lives off campus, just telling me where he lives. But he's like, I just want to tell you that I listen to you guys throughout going to college here. When I wake up in the morning, take a shower, or when I'm working out, sometimes getting ready to pour, uh, drink some beers with my friends, or at late at night when I'm having trouble sleeping, when I've had some tough times, man. You guys have been with me all throughout college, you know? And, bro, I mean, I... I Dare I say he's no. learned more from the cast than the college. I would agree <laughs> with that. And I think this is a, a beautiful gesture, which brings me to my next question, because this is something that um, it's very foreign to me. Right. Now, if you get a unsolicited gift <clears throat> of a of joint or marijuana or pot <clears throat> from an unknown source... Yeah. Is that like somebody coming to your show and baking cookies and then you get them backstage and say, I bake cookies? Because what I do with those cookies is I, I they're in the garbage. Right. Yeah. 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 No, that. So, so, so do you. <laughs> s- <laughs> Hold on. I gotta, I'm getting hot. <laughs> Do you smoke pot that people bring you? Yes. Yes. It's a weird it's, thing. It's kind of like people steal things from people all the time, but they would never steal your golf clubs when you leave them out. They would never steal your skis when you leave them out. It's just like a weird unwritten rule. And an unwritten rule is no one would ever give anyone else tainted weed. It just doesn't. It's never happened in the history of. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I tell myself. <laughs> what kind of wacko is going to dip my weed in like, what, well, you know, uh, the seagull shit? I don't know. What are they going to do? <laughs> just to, how much do you hate me? How much do you hate me? You're going to come up to me, pretend you like me, and then give me uh, tainted weed? Jesus! I- what I ever do? <laughs> in, the, in the world we're living in. Oh, my God. I, I wouldn't put it past someone to go, you helped me through college, and next thing you know, you're out on your porch in the morning coughing up blood because you smoked the, you smoked the tainted <laughs> weed. I didn't read the back of the note. He says, I pulled the, I pulled the pee with my professor, and I got expelled, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> oh god so yeah, no yeah i know i gotta i gotta rethink that sometimes you know security oh. thing yeah i'm always paranoid about that but i want to hit on something you just stated 
which is a, is a great thought. And the, you don't get this type of thinking on any other podcast because they just don't have the wherewithal. You, you bring up items that are, are left out and it's just understood they're not going to get ripped off. Yeah. Skis, right? right? What else did you say? What else did you say? Golf clubs. When you golf go into a, a, a golf thing, you know, you know, like any other thing, you lock up your bike. When you're golfing, though, you never go, do you lock up your bags? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm going to throw another one at you. Mm-hmm. You ever go into a locker room at a gym, and let's say the guy didn't want to put his shoes in the locker, and there's just, like, business shoes sitting underneath the bench, right? <laughs> right, right, right. Are those one of the items that fall under? You can't rip off just unattended shoes. That I that you listen. That doesn't that start to fall on the who would steal new <laughs> shoes, man? I mean, uh, if they were, I don't know. know. I mean, it's nice, that nice pair of Ferragamos, right? You, you look and you go, hey, I think those are a nine, and they they look kind of brand new. Can you steal those? <laughs> uh, you know, you, 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 I don't know so much about shoes, but I, I think if there was a nice leather jacket, and you went to grab your jacket, you know, that's a that's that's. I, I locker room theft happens, bro. I have to say, the Ferragamos are not safe if they are not in a locker, not in a locker room. A bowling ball. Boom. <laughs> Nobody ever steals it, right? You're never going to go to the bathroom in a bowling alley and come back and go, where's my fucking ball? Has that ever happened? <laughs> See a guy running out and get you fucking get the hernia. When you... <laughs> how, how about this one? How about this one? Yeah. On the beach, right? You're surfing. But you put your surfboard by your towel and you're in the ocean. Is a surfboard one of those things you don't Absolutely. touch? Absolutely. That surfers might tell you that's the number one thing, dude. Like, <laughs> like that. Yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah, yeah. And surfers, hey. man. I tell you, you don't watch them, that show I've been trying to tell you about for the longest time. Animal Kingdom. They all surf, but surfers, pff, they are. Badass. They all they kick ass. They're so tough, man. You know? I would no. never if a, if a surfer wanted to fight me in the parking lot, I'm out of there. Oh no. Point break. <laughs> Those guys <laughs> Yeah. Sure. I ain't I ain't screwing with anybody in a wetsuit. I'm sorry. Yeah. That just that's oh. just, just not not for me. <laughs> no, what not. about the what about the half zipped wetsuit where they, <laughs> they took the top off and it's just right and they're all ripped? And you're like, oh, man, fuck this. It's like, you know, a half-peeled banana, just in case you were wondering if I was right, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> Again, just came up with it on the spot, people. <laughs> <laughs> but no, you're right. You started it because of the wetsuit. No, you're right, man. Yeah. Nothing, nothing written. Nothing written here. Okay. Yeah. How about this one? I'll give you another one. Yeah. Because when I was on the road, I used to go into coffee houses and, and crank out some work just to get out of the hotel. I used to take my computer to like a Starbucks set up. And I would have, you know, like a notebook out and my computer. And I had to go take a piss. Right. Now. Would you just get up and walk to the bathroom in a Starbucks in a that's in any town, name one, or do you have to go to the person next to you? Hey, I'm gonna go to the bathroom. You mind watching my computer? What's the move? I my, I got one or two moves, but your second one is never one. I never ask anyone else to do security for my shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. I don't. I either I either bring it with me. Or I'd take a chance. You know what I mean? I usually just take a chance because I'm like, I'm quick in the bathroom and you're like, who would have the balls, you know? But one time I was cleaning out my Jeep on 2nd Avenue when I lived there and I had both of the doors open and I was just like, I had a double parked and I, uh, on the sidewalk and I was cleaning the inside and I turned to put something on my stoop and when I turned back, this kid 
was walking past, and I, and I just saw, like, a, a little bit, like, into his pocket. And I'm like, was that my leather bag? And I go, hey. And he, and he looks over, and he kept walking. And, and he's like, what? And I go, hey. And, and I go up, and I, I was, like, scared because if I'm wrong, I'm like, and I grabbed him. I'm like, Come, get over here. And I'm grabbing him. He's like, let me go. I go, get over here. And I open up his jacket, and I pull it, and I go, what the fuck? Are you fucking kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me? I'm, I'm going to call the cops. Jack, I'm calling the cops. And he's like, let me go. And I let him go. And I'm like, I'm calling the cops. And I wasn't going to, you know, and he, he must have been like 17, 18, and he just ran off. But it was just like, I fucking turned my head for a second. I mean, the balls, bro. So ever yeah. since then, I'm like. Yeah. 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 Shit. You never know, man. They could they could come by at any moment, take it and run. It's it's it could be quick. A bathroom to me, a bathroom break at a, at a Starbucks for a thief is like you going to Mexico for sixteen days. These people could not only take your your bag, <laughs> you could, take a, <laughs> your coat, and clean the whole table like you weren't even there, and there's be somebody sitting there. <laughs> Drinking a drinking a coffee, eating a muffin when you come back out. You go, what the fuck am I? <laughs> Not only is your shit gone, it's been gone so fast. Somebody else reset. Dude, by the time you get out of the bathroom, they're already buying shit with your fucking information. It's unbelievable, in, right? In, in the bathroom, while you're in there, on your phone, charges are coming up from your credit card. You're like, what the fuck? Uh, they're already they're already down the street at Bloomingdale's buying buying wardrobe and you're still washing your hands. By the way, man, where where um where, 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 where do you sell if I if you went to the bathroom and I grabbed your uh computer, right? I just took it. Grabbed the outlet, you had it plugged in, nice. Maybe I even grabbed the carry bag, right? What's my next move, right? I I want to go. I need cash right away. What? Where am I going with this thing? Right, right to a pawn shop. I don't know what you do with a stolen computer because there's a passcode, this and that, and the other thing. Yeah. Uh, if you are familiar with computers and are a hack, you could probably get in there and start looking around for credit card numbers, bank routing numbers, you know. Whatever photos of what you got in there, right. who, who knows what you you know they could do with it. I'm just saying, I think it's a steal and grab, and they figure it out later, right? Right, right. Is yeah. hey, I got an Apple computer, I can't get in. You know anybody? Yeah, you know Freddie knows how to get into those. And then Freddie comes over, and he's got it's just a whole syndicate. But before Freddie comes over, I'm sitting in my living room, and I got your stolen laptop. It starts flashing green. I, I right away think that you activated some FBI tracking system you got. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I just, you must, I bet there's a guy that goes, anyone who brings me a laptop, I give you 200 bucks, and it's some Einstein in a basement, and then dudes yeah. are just bringing them. Yeah, wow. Yeah. Yeah, probably. I don't know. These are like soldiers out there collecting for the kingpin that's in a basement in a warehouse deep inside the inner city. So, uh, and by the way, I'm not saying the inner city people are the, uh, on stealing. I'm just use that as a reference point. You could also flip that and say northwest suburbs of Cleveland. You know, what I'm anywhere, anywhere, man. Yeah, no, I hate that. Listen. <laughs> It's a tap dance now. It's a tap dance. Tap dance. Tap dance. Okay. So um, I got to run something by you, and I don't know if I'm in the minority here. Growing up, when your parents hid Easter eggs, did they hide plastic eggs or the eggs you painted? Plastic. Oh, when I was a kid. Oh, when I was a yeah. kid. That's funny. Yeah. When I was a kid, we hid the hard-boiled ones. Okay. Yeah. And now what do you do? Now it's all plastic ones with bullshit little plastic stuff in there. It's just, yeah, it's all <laughs> stuff made in China all over the lawn. <laughs> okay. Growing up, the real eggs, the hard-boiled eggs, did you hide them inside the house? The Easter Bunny, did they, they hide it inside the house or outside the house? No. When I grew up, I had one bat. We made our eggs, you know, colored them and stuff. 
and then left them out and somehow the Easter Bunny put them in our basket and he hid our basket and that was it. And then maybe we'd go to someone's house and we'd have an Easter egg hunt with some hard boiled eggs and that was it. Wasn't a lot going on for Easter, never particularly cared for the holiday as far as the fun level. It was never up there with Christmas or Halloween for me personally. It was all right. Okay. It was all right. It was all right. And the parents never drank. It was always Sunday. It was boring. And none of the adults partied. Yeah. Because they all had to work. Okay. So uh, we, too, growing up, hid hard-boiled eggs. All right. And uh, each, it was a hunt because you found an egg, and on the egg was a note where the next egg was. Wow. High tech. I dig it. Yeah. So it was little clues, little hints, and the, the hunt lasted 30, 35 minutes. This stuff was hidden. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it wasn't it wasn't out where you see it. This stuff was, like, buried. Right? <laughs> right. Yeah. So fast forward yesterday, we had my sister and her kids come over and the Easter egg hunt was all plastic eggs with candy outside on the lawn, right? Yeah. Now, majority were just in plain view, and and others were kind of hidden, but like on top of a bush, by the pool, on a on a chair, right? <laughs> and they're like, oh, go find the eggs, and the kids are running around putting all the eggs in the basket, and there's a golden egg, which got it's got cash in it. We did the same shit, dude. Today, yesterday, we had a golden egg. We put five bucks in it. Yeah. Okay. So I'm sitting there looking at this, and I'm like, I don't know. Like, growing up, it was the hunt. And now it's like the Easter thing. The Easter hunt, like, it lasts five, not even five minutes. And they come back, and they got candy and the plastic eggs. And if you if you didn't find some, that's fine. But also, in the morning, Lana put all the eggs out in the morning. Mm-hmm. And about eight thirty, I hear I hear. Caca! Caca! I'm like, what the hell? I got about twelve crows. Circle in the lawn, right? And they're doing dive bombs on the egg. So they're coming in and they're getting the egg and then taking off with the plastic egg because there's chocolate inside, right? The fuck out of here. Are you serious? Now oh. this start this started yesterday or Saturday when uh Serafina had real eggs and she was putting it on the lawn, just playing around, and she went in and 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 a crow came and took the egg and must have went back to the nest and was eating a full hard boiled egg, right? Which which I'm sure the other birds were like, Did you fucking get that in? <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> like, do, you, do, you, do you do you think birds tell other birds you gotta go down the street, the house with the with the awning. Right. They got hard boiled it, or is it all on scent? Like they smell it and they go that way, you know, like right. Because I, I had they, they came back because I, I I said get all the eggs off. This is Saturday. Get all the hard boiled eggs off the grass because they're all gonna come back. And sure enough, they came back six of them circling. Now what I think is they remembered. From Saturday, the hard-boiled egg, yeah. and they came back Sunday when they saw eggs, which are not hard-boiled but plastic, and then they start swooping in on them. Right. So I was like, "Do birds?" And again, this is you know, we don't know. We don't know the answer to this. I could tell you don't, right? Like. Well, I'm so into this. I, uh, dude, this is bizarre. Uh, I got to show the audience. Look at the second line down. I have all my notes for today. Birds coming back. I wanted to talk about <laughs> birds today. I'm so into this. I'm so, so into this. 
What's your bird take? What, what, what do you got written down? What, well, what, no, I'm, what, I'm first of all focusing on what you're saying. I don't even know. Does the bird even know what it's grabbing until it gets it back to the nest? Because what you're saying, like, does it does it get back to the nest and then go, what do you got? I don't know, like a burglary in the dark, and you don't check the bag. <laughs> till you get, and, and then even he's like, is that a fucking egg? It's a fucking egg. And then, but they must no, be no, no. coming back because they know. Yeah. Well, like to your point. Do they get the egg and they recognize it as an egg, right? But then when they go to crack it with the beak, do they go? Is this hard boiled? Like, uh-huh. do they? <laughs> <laughs> do they go? This is harder than any egg we've ever fucking eaten, right, guys? Right? I mean, I don't know if they have a hard boiled term, but they're like. And by the way, do they even know that they're eating an unborn fucking thing of them? Right? I mean, on some level, they don't even know if they know they're doing that. <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> so, so yeah, I got to thinking on that. Now, yeah. what what do you got on the birds? Well, I, I, two things because I'm I'm seeing. I put up a birdhouse. It fell down during the winter. We have a couple of them up, right? And one of them has already got got birds in it. So then, right before I left to my mother's, I put the other one back up, put it up nice and good. And as I'm putting it up. I'm wondering to myself, because I can already hear birds chirping. Now, who who gets it? Like, first one to fucking fly into it, do they get dibs? Or, like, can a bird fly into it and then a bigger bird says, get your shit and get the fuck out, right? <laughs> you know? Like, I'm, I'm so curious to, to see who gets the... Because it's beautiful with the awning and the little stick so you could sit out in the rain and not get wet. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and some other birds under the gutter getting dripped on off. <laughs> Like, who gets what? And by the way, if you're also, if you're under my gutter, like, I mean, why, like, why wouldn't you I, go to Mar Largo, you know? Like, like, <laughs> like, I, why wouldn't you go to a Trump property or something like that and just <laughs> never come back? Like, the canals in Florida, is it like, uh, oh, there's too many birds here, let's get the fuck <laughs> out of here? Did a bird, did a bird say that? Because... I'm just saying, I'm looking up at the birds in my house. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing here? I barely want to be here. <laughs> That's all fascinating, right? You know? Oh, my God. So let me ask you, have you seen two different birds hanging out in the birdhouse? Like, is there a, is there a, a cardinal... And then a uh, hawk. Yeah, what? Right. No. Or do you, do you generally see these like little birds? You know, you, you know the average bird. It's like a little brown bird, right? Yeah, or right. A black bird. Yeah. You know, like they just eat seeds and stuff. Is it that bird, it's, or are you starting to see exotics? No, I mean, I got. It's pretty much the robin, that basic bird. Now I do get the blue birds and the red birds, you know, but they kind of come and go. There you go. There's another thing. Did they know they're stunning? Right? Like, I think, I think they know because they never stick around like the other birds. They're like, you've seen enough. I'm, I'm going to go dazzle another fucking neighborhood now. <laughs> right? I mean, it's always the shit bird that's sitting on the branch all day. Get the fuck out of here and let the bluebird have that branch. You know what I'm saying? The bluebirds uh, are so nice, you call the family when they're there, right? <laughs> Come to the window. You got to see. You don't call for the other fucking bird. <laughs> You're right. They they come and it's almost like they tease you a little bit. Yeah. Because when you do run over, you're like, where? Where? No, it was just there. <laughs> It's it almost knows. It's like I'll wait till he goes to get the family. Then, then I'm out of here. Yeah. Totally, man. And they're gorgeous. They're gorgeous, uh, you know? <laughs> And then we have um, we got a lot of tall trees around us. So this time of year we get a bunch of hawks <laughs> above. Oh, that is fucking gold. Uh, <laughs> And and they just I mean, and the other day, like I'm cleaning out my lawnmower, getting it ready for the season. I'm on the front lawn. And I got the dog in a little cage, and I don't think they had any interest in the dog, but they're just so high up with the wide wings, and and it's windy, and you ever see like when you when the wind is is doing that to them, and they're going again. Are they up there? Like I would think they are. Like this is so fucking fun. Like are they? 
And they look like they're just flying for the fun of it. You know, like, do you think I ever just go to the wife? I'm, just, I'm going flying. I'll be back in a half hour. <laughs> <laughs> flying again? Were you going flying with Tom again? You and Tom. Got to... <laughs> I mean, it just, it looks so fun. Do you think they're enjoying it? Well, I don't know if we were talking about this on the cast before I was talking to somebody else about it. When it's a windy day and a bird's out there, right? Flying. Yeah. yeah. And we, because we had some really bad winds about a month and a half ago here. And I'm looking at the birds and it don't seem like they're affected by the wind that I like. How the hell do I go out of my house and it's tough for me to get to my own car through a big gust of wind? And you got, <laughs> yeah. you got a bird that weighs a half a pound. In the sky. How the fuck is that not just taken out? Dude, and behind the bird, you see in the distance a Delta flight with the with the wings <laughs> doing this. And then a two-pound bird just right gone through, no turbulence. And you're right, right there with you. It just, it seems to me like there's nothing better than being a bird, except being a human, of course. But, right, if you can't be, I'm see, right? I mean, you could just. Oh, yeah, no. And do oh, you think they know when they're in another country? Like, I don't want to badmouth uh, any other country, but when they land outside of America, do you think they're like, eh, let's get the fuck out of here? <laughs> <laughs> we're sleeping on his branch till morning and then we're fucking out of here. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I, you, you don't get bird no. talk on any cast. No. I mean, no. this is <laughs> no, no, it's all the same stuff, man. This is yeah, this is like I can't believe we well, don't. This is a this is a Netflix show right here. <laughs> I'm telling you. Well, you know, speaking of Netflix, I I've been seeing there's a lot of people that watch our video in like bed. Like you know, yeah. they'll they'll watch it as it's like a like a talk show or like they would watch a Hulu show or Showtime show. They actually, you know, I saw a couple eating popcorn watching uh, our video casts, <sighs> which is nice to see. That, I mean, come yeah. on, this is beautiful. That, beautiful. that is. I saw, I saw a guy last week show me a photo. He's got a plate of sushi and a glass encased uh, mudroom sort of a thing overlooking a lake. It was such a nice view. I'm like, guy, I don't even know. Don't taint the, the moment with the cast. Like, don't the, what he was doing was like too nice. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. So here's another one. I'm going to throw this one by you. Last night. What? Last night, about 4.15, we hear rattling of the house, the the, like the chandeliers, the glass. And oh, that could only shit. be in one thing. That, that's an earthquake. Now, I heard it. I didn't feel it, which is uh, very odd to to hear something but not feel it. 4.15 at night. Now, I got to tell you, the last 10 tremors I've felt are at night. Now, do you think I'm not feeling the daytime tremors because I'm walking around? and Or do you think Earthquakes typically happen at night. Now, earthquakes have happened in the day, right? We know that. The yeah. big one being Northridge, I think, in 1994. But I want to find out, and I want to do some research on the, do a majority of earthquakes happen in the evening? Because I wish they happened at, during okay. the day. Yeah. Because it yeah. it's not so frightening. Right. Because I'm like, yeah. to get woken up out of bed and your house is shaking. Yeah, yeah. I don't know too many things that are scarier. I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't imagine that. I just couldn't even imagine that. Now, now when that happens, right, um, you go and you check on the kids, I would imagine, right? Yeah, check on the kids. It was just like a just a tremor, and I was it. And right away, I'm on the phone looking at my earthquake app. That's see what I was going to ask you. Yeah, yeah. Look at the where the epicenter was. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, oh, where was it? Where was it? It was uh, in Lenox, California, which is near Inglewood, so about 18 miles from where I'm at. Now, what would you do? Would you do anything different if it, if it said like 
down the block, you know, like like it was a quarter of a mile from your house. Or like, if it was down, it was down the block. I'd be I'd be picking stuff up around the house. You know what I'm saying? It, 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 oh, oh! So people that live 18 miles away, they felt it more than you did. You're saying? If you're near the epicenter, you feel it more. Oh, I oh I thought they I didn't think they felt it any more than you felt it. It's just that. After the, we studied it, that's where it was coming from. But wherever the epicenter is, even in a mild one, they, whoever's right there feels it. The, oh, shit. So do you know, yeah. since you've been living at your house, the closest epicenter ever to your house? Do you know that? How many miles the closest one ever was? Mm-hmm. Probably 29 miles, but the... It was like more of a high fours, early fives as far as the Richter scale. So it was more powerful, but further away. But this one was the closest one. one. Closest, but but not. But not powerful. Not powerful. I'm just like, you know, but, you know, now, now I'm on heightened alert. And here's the thing I think I got a sense because I was thinking about earthquakes that day. You ever, you ever go, eh, it hasn't rained in a while, a thunderstorm in a while, whatever. And then that that night it's thundering, you know, like one of those, like you yeah, almost pre- yeah. you almost felt it coming, <laughs> like a dog. Yeah, I, that happens to me sometimes. I'll be like, what is uh, Kevin Bacon? Is he still doing anything? And then next thing you know, there'll be a commercial for a new Kevin Bacon project. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> That's how it works for me. Never like you're saying, though. <laughs> but so, yeah, but I mean, if you could predict three in a row in Hall in LA just three in a row that's enough to like you pay for that lady to come and incense your house for spirits yeah, yeah, you could be yeah. hired as a uh, walk my property and tell me when you think the next earthquake is coming here can you imagine you just walk someone's lawn and you're like 2022 I'd say like February <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to want to be here for February 2022. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Shit, so what, do you, so what do you do, man? You just go on with your life? What do you yeah, do? What do you do, you know? You just, you know, I mean, nothing you can do. I'm just saying that, uh, you know, it, uh, shit rattles you. You get up and, uh, and I, I couldn't sleep the other night, right? You ever get in these moments where you can't sleep and then, like, comedy's coming to you? I had, I had comedy coming to me, like, like a sieve. Yeah. Uh, just not so much, like, flushed out bits, just ideas. Now, this is something I'm wondering. Lana is a heavy sleeper. But... Caruso was crying uh, the other night. It's about one o'clock in the morning, and we have the you know the the camera on him, which is attached to our phone, so you know we could hear it. It's not loud, but we could hear if the kids are crying or screaming. Yeah. She don't hear that. The phone is literally right next to her on a bedside table. <laughs> don't hear it. I'm up, and I and I go, uh, babe. He's crying. Uh, huh, huh. He's crying. Uh, and it, oh. Nothing. So he, he eventually went back to sleep. So I wake up and I go, let me ask you something. How the hell that you don't hear our son crying in the middle of the night with the phone right by your ear? But you hear me in the morning getting a plate out of the cabinet to put my eggs on and you say that's loud <laughs> uh, uh, right? yeah I get that how, too. how, the, how the hell because how, I'm doing it it's loud why <laughs> it's about because by morning you're you're out of that deep sleep any little noise will wake you up so don't wake me up this is the last last bits of my sleep and any noise will wake me up in the middle of the night that's a D. You, you could you could base the turkey in the middle of the night and she wouldn't wake up. No. No? There's another one. There's another one. About 3 o'clock in the morning, I get up to take a piss, right? Mm-hmm. I get out of bed and sometimes I get, where are you going? Like loud, like out of nowhere. <laughs> like you, 
you felt me get out of bed in a deep in a deep sleep. Your son's crying. You don't hear shit. So I asked her this. She says it's psychological. When I go to bed in your home, she said, if they cry, I know you're gonna handle it because you're you you're a light sleeper. When yeah. you're not home, I know I gotta tune in. It's almost like when you know you got to wake up at six o'clock in the morning for an early call, mm -hmm. you you wake up at five forty-five before right. the alarm goes off because in your mind you go, I, I can't oversleep. Yeah, that's what she's saying. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, I don't nah, that makes listen. That makes a lot of sense. She's like, you know, you. And by the way, when the, when Caruso is crying. What what, do you, what is this, 1945? What are you doing, nudging the wife, telling the wife the kid's crying? What you, so you get up and deal with it. What, what do you do, uh, lean over and pour scotch until she gets back? <laughs> <laughs> Good point. Yeah. However, what I like to do, since Caruso's got a uh, fractured clavicle. Ah, I forgot about that. I apologize. Yeah. I need I need to discuss shit. Like, yeah. For me, I mean, what do we do? You know, like I'm. Let's bat some ideas here. All right. I'm not really familiar. <clears throat> with bro, with broken bones. No, I hate. Out of, out of two year old. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. Is there a child's version of Ben Gay? By the way. Oh, there's like a Neosporin, which oh, is like yeah. for rashes and whatnot. Nothing really for this. This this has got to heal on its own. How's he doing? How's he doing with it? He's good. Like walking around, lifting up stuff, and uh, he just can't put a lot of weight on it. But it's amazing how the kid adapts. He's now just getting up with his left arm, pushing his left arm up because he knows his right arm is uh, is injured. So yeah. they wow. know. I mean, as, as young as they are, they, he figures it out. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Wow, man. That's <laughs> was kid something else. You, I'll just use my other arm. Don't worry about me. Go about your day. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <clears throat> oh now, man, what else? What else you got over there? Uh, so I got to. By the way, just a quick thing here. We're driving home today, and and, and like we talk about this, but if people don't want to be replaced by automation, then here's a perfect example. We're going to Dunkin' Donuts, right? On the way home, road trip. I go to use the restroom. Jackie gets me a medium coffee. I come out. Dunkin' Donuts is empty. There's a, a, a young lady behind the counter. She sees me and Sadie and Jackie and a couple highs. Take the coffee. Jackie goes out. I'm sorry. We go out. I go, I got to go to the bathroom. By the time I get out to the car, Jackie's got the coffee on her. She's like, I spilled your coffee all over my lap. It's done. I'm sorry. You got to go get yourself another one. I'm sorry. And I go, don't worry about it. You got the cup. And she's like, no, I threw everything. I go, all right. So I go in and I'm like, listen, I'm not going to go to the lady. My wife spilled it. Can you please give me another one for free? But I'm like, let me, let me just like do a dab. So I go up to her. I go, hey, me again. And she goes, hey. And I go, uh, well, we'll do this again. Medium coffee. And she goes, Oh, yeah. Uh, what she go? Oh, you need another one? And I go, well, my wife spilled it all over me. But yeah, just that's it. Medium coffee. And she goes, oh, 222. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. I mean, I kind of, I didn't say, hey, can I get one? Because I spilled it. But I'm like, let me see. Yeah. I mean, what are we doing? Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, no I, you would think just telling her what happened and then she offers rather than you come out of the box with, I need a freebie. Yeah. Well, which brings me to my next my next question. Do you think if you came in and go, my wife spilled the coffee, I'm going to need another one. And do you think she would go 222 still? I, I think so. He, he, I, the only way she might not is if I said, uh, my wife spilled my coffee on me, but the lid didn't stay on well. I, I just need another one. I'm not paying for it because the lid wasn't on very well. And then maybe she'd go, let me get my manager and, you know, listen, <laughs> I'll give you the 222. <laughs> but I but I did it real subtle. I'm like, here we go again. I go, what I say? I said, uh, yeah, I guess we'll do this. Try this again. And if she didn't respond to that, then I would just pay. But she said, oh, wanna, if you needed another one, huh? And I go, well, no, ba ba ba. What are you going to do, though, huh? Oh, what are you going to do is, isn't there an awkward now <clears throat> moment with you getting your wallet out 
and her waiting in silence is do you feel like a tension there like do you think she knew she was being an ass or she had no clue i i honestly feel like just like a machine may as well be a machine just like ah, 222 uh, you know boom 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 you know it's it i mean i worked at mcdonald's for uh, a, a couple of days at one point i worked at little caesar's once I got settled into any of those jobs, the first thing I did was go back, tell my friends how we're going to work the scam for the free food, <laughs> right? I mean, these are huge corporations. Fuck them. Give me the coffee, right? Yeah, Dunkin' Donuts. What are we going to bankrupt Dunkin' Donuts? Have you ever been to Boston? There's more Dunkin' Donuts than houses in fucking Massachusetts. <laughs> That's what we did at Subway. My buddy got a job at Subway, right? And we're like, oh, this is great. He goes, come in. The owner leaves at 10. And we came in at 10.15. Eight, eight deep. And we got fed. Now, now you, ever, <laughs> you ever come in at 10.15 and the owner's still there and you're like, what the fuck? Make it a sit, half a sub, half a sub. You know, and you pissed at him. He, he's <laughs> lipping the word sorry through the glass. <laughs> even, even the owner's like, hey, it's funny that 10 of your friends show up right around when I usually go home. Oh, man. <laughs> Uh, my f well, <laughs> what we did when that happened, we waited outside because we saw that the owner was in there. <laughs> so uh, there was ten guys circling the parking lot like buzzers. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's man, that's the problem with owning your own business. And listen, now looking back on that, it was like man, the guy breaking his ass totally. trying to start a franchise. Bullshit. Next thing, next next thing, you know. Half of half of his seafood and crab. Back in the day, Subway used to have a seafood and crab, which I thought was actually seafood and crab. Right? It, I, I thought I thought it was like a delicacy. Right? I'm like, you you kidding me? You can get you can get a foot long seafood crab for seven ninety nine. That's unbelievable. <laughs> So we went in there, and he, you know, he gave us the restaurant. This, this our buddy, right? he just gave us the restaurant. I so, so, feel so, 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 so much so where we went back and made our own sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, a 16 year old kid in a leather jacket making a fucking DLT behind the thing. <laughs> Holy shit. That's, when I worked at the deli, my buddies would go in the back and help me make the egg sandwiches for uh, for ourselves. And then if I had a customer, I'd go, Grady, my buddy Grady. I'd go, Grady, make one for uh, I need a BLT for a and. That was the old days, dude. No cell phones, no cameras, but behind the subway counter. And dude, 20 years later, it's it's one of your signature bits coming out of the gate in your stand-up career is about subway. What are the odds? When you're behind there doing it, did you ever know I'm going to be a big comedian I, someday having a bit about this place? I never did it because I thought that was a ball. You know, like you had the buddies in your group that didn't care. Like, you know, yeah. I, I've always had like a filter. I'm like, I ain't going back there just in case the guy comes back and I'm going to be, I'm going to be back there uh, making sandwiches, toasting bread. <laughs> and this guy's going to be like, what are you doing back there? I'm like, nah, Phil, Phil said it was okay. <laughs> I know, man. But when you're in, when you're, uh, what do you got there? Your little energy. My little energy. Down, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy though with that age the shit will do though, man. You just like you don't think about the embarrassment of getting busted. No, listen, again, in reflecting back on those days, not like we were bad kids at all. He was just there, he gave us some sandwiches and whatnot. But my God, I mean, I remember working at Fud Rockers and uh and like taking a couple cookies out of the bakery. You know, we weren't supposed you know. 
the Fud Rock, if you want a cookie, we got an employee discount of 50% off the cookie. So the cookie, instead of a dollar, it's 50 cents. And I'm like, anyway, I'm like, come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Ring it up, fifty cent. That thing a little. I mean, if you work, if you're in corporate end of Fud Ruckus, you probably have in your expenses going. You know, we're gonna spend this much on you know napkins, this much on me, and we're gonna we're gonna get ripped off by the by <laughs> by the staff for about ten million across the board. I mean, it's in the budget. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I I worked. I worked as a dishwasher. I was telling Jackie about this the other day at Saxon Arms Restaurant where I grew up on Long Island. And one time, it was these two brothers who owned it, and it was a real popular seafood restaurant. <clears throat> they sent me up to the uh, liquor room to get the big coffee canister, big silver thing that you use for weddings. You know, you put the coffee in. And uh, they wanted me to bring it down. They were having an outdoor wedding. So I go up there, and I'm up there by myself. I take a bottle of vodka, and I put it in the coffee thing. And screw it back on. And when I turned to leave, the other brother's coming into the liquor cabinet. He's like, what are you doing up here? And I'm like, da-da-da, told me to come up here and, and get the coffee urine. And he's like, well, you're, you're no one's supposed to be in this liquor cabinet unaccompanied. All right, go ahead. And I'm walking out, 16 years old, and I'm like, I got a bottle of vodka in this, and you don't even know, right? So then I walk down, I take it out behind the dumpster, I unscrew it, I fucking hide the vodka, I go back in, I tell the other cook in the dishwasher, I got a bottle of vodka. And then after work that day, we went down to the canal and just fucking drank vodka right out of the bottle, baby. <laughs> right? Kids don't do that shit today. They don't no. do that. No, now now they break into your bank account and they and they steal everything, every penny you got. They're doing they're doing theft, they, and they take everything you got in your checking account. And you go up and go, what happened? I don't know. Somebody just took eight grand out of my checking account. <laughs> Which I still so, can't I still can't believe that like that's on you if that happens. Like if the bank yeah. calls, that's crazy. <laughs> so so here at Fuddruckers, when I used to work there. And I don't know if you had this experience working in, in you know, the McDonald's or whatever. The, the, the chefs were Mexican, right? So they would make, like, you know, Fuddruckers, they had hamburgers. They would put a Mexican twist on it, and they would, like, have, it was like a Mexican burger. Instead of, like, sliced tomatoes, they had salsa. Instead of, like, American cheese, they had, like, the cheese, like the like a Mexican cheese, right? Yeah. So they were making, they were making, they re, they they rearranged the whole menu when it came for like you get you got a burger for again fifty percent off, but they would make the burger Mexican style, and someone saw one of the guys eating this beautiful burger uh, in a customer saw our cook eating this Mexican type burger and goes to comes up to the counter and goes, I want what that guy's having. Right. right. And I was working a register. I go, that's an original. That that's not even on the, on the menu. I mean, these, these Mexican guys literally could have started up their own Mexican burger chain, what they were coming up with in there. <laughs> right, right, right. That's Jesus. Oh, my! I thought you were going to tell me you're going to go, listen, that's not on the menu, but if you got cash, I'll have them, <laughs> I'll have them look that up. <laughs> yeah, that's like oh, what I, yeah. I dare I even bring this up, man, from uh, flashbacks. But when I was on our cruise, working the cruise, the, the food that the customers eat, you know, it's good, but it's like, you know, then you go downstairs and you eat what the crew makes for each other and you feel like you're eating in, in, in somebody's home in the Philippines, you know, you're eating curry and fucking delicious the food that, you know, the people up above would be like, this is too spicy. But when you're down there with the people that work there, it's like, it was unbelievable. I mean, like, I love curry now from that. It's the only thing I got out of that cruise is a, is a love of curry. Well, did they have like a kitchen that uh, they were making food for the employees or people? Yeah, just... they had the, the the staff ate, you know, in their own cafeteria or yeah. you know, their own thing. And like, you know, you got so many different eth ethnicities working there. 
and the, and the chefs, you know, same thing. You know, they're all different ethnicities, so they're making like no holds barred what they eat at home. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, just really good, <laughs> crazy stuff. So much stuff I never even heard of. But I was working with this one comic who was from uh, another country, and he was like really into foreign food, and he would be like, you should try this, you should try that, like stuff that, you know, I'm so ignorant, I'd be like, the fuck is that, you know? But then like, <laughs> I'm like, this shit is just fantastic, man. It was yeah. like, God. <laughs> so. <laughs> but that's it, guys. Right. We gotta thank, thank again the listeners. These, these hours fly by. Um, we uh again appreciate all the feedback we're getting on Twitter. Again, we've been doing this what now? Eight years? Yeah. Yeah, man. Eight eight years. I can't believe eight years. Uh, it's something. Doing Isn't that something, man? Shit. Uh, it really is something. I was just reflecting the other day where if you and I have done this cast, you in parking lots ripping Wi Fi off. Uh, and, and remember you used to do it in your car? Yeah, in the back of it, in the, in the Tim Hortons parking lot for the Wi-Fi. Tim Hortons parking Paul lot, the- or on the cruise, or getting some weird conference room at a day's in, you know? Yeah, it's, yeah, your uh, in-laws, you did it from your in-laws a few times, you were down there, remember? Didn't, didn't, did you didn't do it from that ice, when you were driving Porsches on the ice? Yeah. God damn. You did it for me, right though. Yeah. Finland. Yeah. I thought. <laughs> Holy shit, man. Just keeping it it's going. Cr- crazy. It, it belongs in a capsule for like another, <laughs> another civilization to find. I'm serious. You know? And they want to know what time is like here. This is what they would, you know? This is it, man. This is it. Yeah. All right, man. We'll see you guys next week. <clears throat> Thanks for the listenership. Later, Peace. Bro. All right, guys, a couple of quick announcements. Uh, next weekend, April 16th through 18th, I will be at Coppa Blues Live in Phoenix. If you're in the Phoenix area, baby, come on down. My first show's in a while. Next weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Coppa Blues Live in Phoenix. And then just announced. Saturday, June 12th, I'll be playing Soul Joe's Comedy Club and Lounge in Royersford, Pennsylvania. That's just outside of Philly, like 30 minutes outside of Philly. Outdoor show under like this dome at 6 p.m. start time, Saturday night. Oh, come on. It's going to be a fantastic time. That's Saturday, June 12th. You can go to pcorielli.com and get tickets and all the shows I'm doing are going to start to be announced. I'm very excited. But first, next weekend... Phoenix, baby. Also, Mitch, you're the guy who bought me. That's all I got is the first name. You bought me my wireless earbuds. You may see I'm wearing wires right now. I don't want you to think I bailed on the wireless ones, bro. I'm just having an internet situation. I'm going to get an extender next week, and the internet will work better in my uh, office slash studio here, and then I'll be able to use the wireless ones again. I know you're out there going, what is this guy? I think I just got him a $250 Christmas gift. What the fuck? I know the earbuds are for the show. These prehistoric things are going. Don't worry, brother.